Hi, Christina. It's so good to talk with you. I always love chatting with you and I miss you. And I never get to see you because you're <laughs> onboarding. So tell the people who you are and what you do at Moraware and kind of give us a lowdown. Like what is onboarding and why is it important? Really quick, a couple sentences. Hello, I'm Christina and I'm an onboarding specialist at Moraware. Um, and essentially anytime a customer buys Systemize or CounterGo, um, I am the person that they talk to next. Uh, and I help them get the program set up for their business. I teach them how to use it, answer any questions that they have, uh, so they can just hit the ground running with the new software that they've added to their, their workflow. Yeah, that's awesome. And you're one of, how many onboarders do we have now? I mean, it's we've grown quite a bit in the last few years, so. Yeah, so now we have, we have uh, four of us now. So awesome. We, three others and then we have three people in support who know how to do onboarding so they'll know like exactly what we've gone all over but essentially once someone has finished with us through onboarding then we you know let them fly and then our support team kind of takes over them and and helps them with any questions they have but of course you know if they just got out of onboarding then we help them too we're not just you know saying peace out to them <laughs> <laughs> right. We we still want to care about you. Yeah. We so, still care about your success. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hopefully. Right. Yeah. So um, I know this is probably pretty obvious, but what, like, what's the thought behind onboarding? Why is it so important? And, you know, sometimes we have to chase people down to show up because people are busy and they've got stuff to do, which is why they get software in the first place, right? Is they, they're busy. They need help. So what's the point of it and what purpose does it serve um yeah that's a great question it? so the the point of onboarding really is to make sure that um the person that bought the software knows how to use it they know all the different settings they get it set up for their actual business and their workflow you know with onboarding we try to make sure it's customized to how they do their daily work um, and how like their quoting processes or how their, you know, job processes, we want to make sure that the software is going to work for them. And so showing up to onboarding gives them tips and tricks to make it work for them and allows them to actually start using it faster because we take care of this, a lot of the settings with them in the onboarding calls. So they don't have to try and do it on their own later and, and get frustrated on not knowing what to do. Onboarding is really there to help them get all set up and and make sure they can just start using it right away. So the the sooner they get an onboarding, the faster they'll be able to actually start like seeing the return of investment yeah. on this product they've bought. That's a great point. And it just kind of gets you set up on the right foot so that you from there on you can you're not gonna have to go back and be like, uh oh, we've outgrown the way that we set this up. Now we have to redo everything. Um, especially with systemize because systemize is a much more customizable and intricate software and it, it's so much of your process um what do you usually like to tell people you know when they're starting out and they're like frustrated or they don't know really where to start so say for counter go where would you have somebody start would it be priceless would it be drawing you know what what do you find is the right path yeah so for um i'll go over both products so for counter go um, you know, you can start drawing quotes pretty immediately in counter go. Uh, but I always say start in your price list. And even if you don't update the entire price list or even add pricing in, add in all the material you use, because when you're quoting, it's going to give you that full list of options uh, to select the material for your slab layout, um, rather than you know, only having the three that we initially have in there. So I always suggest, and when we're doing onboarding, we start in the price list, get the material added. And I, I show our customers how to actually like update the entire price list, but it's really self-explanatory. <laughs> Once you get in there, it's pretty user-friendly. So um, the, the biggest thing for CounterGo though, is just adding your material. So you can just start quoting right then and there. and even in quoting, you're able to edit the pricing on the quote itself. So even if you don't add like the pricing for your, all your material, you can do that 
in the quote itself. So, so yeah, so that's for counter go. And then for systemize, that one is a little bit more customizable um, in relation to like their job process. So we always kind of talk through like, what's their current workflow? What are the things they're scheduling for every single job? And then we customize those activity types um, or the things they're scheduling to make sure it's relevant for their jobs so that they can start using it immediately. So for, for Systemize, I really say making sure their activity types are in there, like their, their cut, their fabrication, their template, and that workflow is good so that it's not kind of messing up their whole, having them to like edit a bunch of things and stuff when they're creating jobs. Like you want to make sure that's right first and then start creating the jobs there. Yeah. Do you find that most people are, when they start with the software, are they mostly excited or are they a little bit hesitant or overwhelmed or, you know, what's your experience with that? I actually don't know that the answer to that. So I'm interested. Yeah. Is so it a mix? I, yeah, I would say, um, it is a little bit of a mix, but I think more excite, like exciting feelings more than anything, especially with counter go counter go is like, so exciting because you're able to draw the quote right then and there. It calculates your measurements for you. You don't have to do it by hand anymore. And it, you can draw a quote pretty quickly. And then for systemize, you know, it is a little overwhelming seeing everything you need to set up, but that's what I'm here for in onboarding and what our onboarding team here is here for. And so with systemize, you know, by the end of our first call, they're really excited to get started. We give them a clear plan of action of what they should be focused on in between our next call um, from the first to the second. And so they know exactly what they need to do. But our, our main goals after the onboarding calls and the first calls is to get them to start using it right away so they can, mm -hmm. they don't have to wait a whole month after they sign up to wait till everything is set up to start using it. Like after our first calls, they can really hit the ground running and, and, and use the software. But I, I would say it's more excited at the end of the systemized call. In the beginning, it's overwhelming. <laughs> but in the, in the end, <laughs> I mean, I think exciting. that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah it, also, it, it also requires to take a look at your current processes and think about where you want to go, right? You, you've got software because you want to grow better and streamline everything and, and prevent those mistakes. But that requires some kind of self-awareness and being like, this is how we currently do things. This is where we want to go. And now we have to figure out how to do that. And luckily they have you to, to help them through that. Um, and so it's just a matter of carving out that time as like, I like to say it's like an investment, just like with any machinery you buy, you know, it, it's an upfront cost, but it's going to save you in the long run. Right. And that's, that's kind of the beauty of systemized counter go. Yeah, you're right. It's, Super exciting because you could make a quote the first day and you're already reaping the rewards, right? You're already saving hours of time day one, but yeah. um, that's super exciting. Uh, what would you suggest for people who just got software and they're looking to onboard, say, CounterGo or Systemize, I guess it doesn't matter, but who would you recommend being in that call or showing up to onboarding? Would it be the person that bought it? Would it be somebody else in the office? Would it be whoever is managing the schedule? What do you think is the best way to go there? Yeah, so for, for both products, the main person that should be in those calls is going to be the person that's using it every day. Because <laughs> right. if, if the person that bought it is, say, like the owner, but, the, you know, their admin in the office is, are the main people using it, they need to be on the call because they're going to know you know, we're going to walk them through all the settings and they'll be able to know at the end of that call where to go from there. The owner won't have to train them. We take care of that. And so the main people using the software need to be in the call. <laughs> in the call. <laughs> that one seems pretty obvious, huh? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and especially for CounterGo, like your salespeople, if you want them to be like trained, um, in using the software right away. Like, I think those are really great people to have on the counter go call. Uh, so we can show them how to start quoting and, um, and things uh, for that. But for systemize, it's really useful to have like your main two or three people on the call. We do a lot of group calls all the time. And um, 
that's helpful because then they're also able to bounce ideas off of each other for what their workflow is. And it's not all on one person to figure that out. It's, you know, on like three people to kind of check each other and make sure that the workflows are making sense for what we're setting up. Yeah. So definitely do you get groups of people that do onboarding calls or is it usually just one person? Oh yeah. So for, for counter go, I find most of the time it is just one, one or two people max, but for systemize, we have had groups of people on the call. Um, I like to say like three people is a really great spot for a, like the number of people to be on the call. I find if it's like over five people as like, you know, over five people, people just aren't paying attention. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> And there's like one person it's too doing much of everything. a party. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost too much of a party. And it just seems kind of like pointless for them to be on the first call if they're not going to be the main one setting it all up and using it. So for the first call, it's really important to have like your top three people that are doing all the settings and making sure everything's right on the call. But then after that, like if we need to train the team on how to create a job or, or actually use the program for what you intend it to be, then they can be on the next call and, or we could set up another training call with them to go over like how they're going to actually use the program day to day. But yeah, right. That's actually a really good point that we, it doesn't, it's not like you just get onboarding included with your call. And then after your three sessions or whatever it is, you're done. You could always set up more, right? You could oh, always yeah. reach out to support and have them walk you through it. Like for the lifetime, I don't think a lot of people understand that, but it's as long as you have the software, these resources are available to you, which I think is so great. Um, so it may not be you, but it could be support and they call and they say, hey, we have some new people. We would just want to make sure we're using the software, right? Um, yeah. Do you have any tips or tricks for people that are about to go into onboarding? Yeah. So um, b- before I share those, though, I wanted to kind of circle back <laughs> on like the onboarding, you know, sure. <laughs> we can schedule as more as many onboardings as they need to feel comfortable with the software and make sure it's working for them and the business and their workflows. Yeah. And, and so it just because we say, you know, you get three calls max, like that isn't the max, you know, we're dedicated to that customer for as long as they need us to make sure that, you know, they're they're going to fly after, after onboarding. So <laughs> uh, I just wanted to circle back to that. You don't just go to support right after, like we're there to, to really schedule as many onboardings yeah. that are needed with them to make sure they're feeling comfortable. Um, but I find yeah, like we're pretty efficient. So I would say like three to four max are like the onboarding calls it takes to get up and going with systemized counter go. Sometimes we can like work through everything in one call and it's like easy peasy, but right. yeah. Um, and then tips and tricks. Do you find it? Sorry, really quick. That just made me think of another question. Um, When you, um, do you find it easier if somebody is already a counter go customer and then they add on systemize, do you find the onboarding goes a little quicker or easier because they already kind of have a sense of the software or is it the same as if somebody didn't have counter go? No, I think it is actually a lot easier to get a sense of the software because our our programs are very cohesive with each other. So the buttons are the same, editing forms are the same. So, you know, if they're using CounterGo really well and um, to its full ability, getting systemized setup is like, you know, it's it's pretty easy because they know where the buttons are and like what the icons mean. They're all pretty much the same. So it is a lot more fluid to get them set up if they already have counter go. Um, but systemize if they don't have counter go, it's, it's fine. You know, we just go walk through kind of like how to edit things a little bit more so than we do if they already have counter go. Got it. Got it. Um, and then, yeah, just any tips and tricks, final tips and tricks you have for anybody, you know, nervous about the time it takes to onboard or invest in software. Yeah. So I think that the tips and tricks is just, um, number one, being there with an open mind, like in remembering why you bought software in the first place. Uh, you know, it's, it's not going to, uh, happen overnight, I guess, as far as like it being extremely easy, but, uh, we're here to make sure it is a really easy transition to use the software because, 
we know like a lot of our businesses are are still drawing by hand or you know using software is kind of foreign to them like who knew that you could be really organized with <laughs> with one system right. or you know you could quote really fast on a computer versus just like calculating it by hand like you've been doing for years so you know just being with an open mind is like my number one tip um but then the second tip is to actually come to the onboardings after you've bought any software or or if after you've bought any software, just knowing what your workflow is. And, and like we kind of discussed earlier, just being really self-aware about what your workflow is so that you can try and relate it as much as possible to the software. And one of the biggest things that I love doing with my customers is relating it to what they're currently doing. So it's not such a huge change and transition. It's really just going from like, you know, a notepad to the computer. So um I think just knowing what your workflow is, is is really important to have a successful onboarding. If you're not sure like what you do and why you do it, then that's hard to get things set up to make it feel like an easy transition. <laughs> right. Well, and at the end of the day, software is a tool, right? Like it's not, yeah. a, it's not a, it's not going to solve all your problems on its own. It's you have to enter the information. And yeah. I've heard some fabricators say good info in, good info out. So, yes. you know, whatever yeah. you're trying to learn requires people to do their job and put input the info the correct way. And, and like you said, know how they do things and have it run through the system. So um, those are great tips and tricks. Thank you so much for sharing those. <laughs> and thank you so much for doing this with me. Um, it's good practice and I'm always like talking to you. So <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right. Well. Make sure you buy our software and talk to Christina. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be the lovely face helping you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. What a good pitch. <laughs> yeah. All right.